here in Northeast Florida, we're sort of at the place where the mangroves meet the salt marsh. The wide open expanse that we see in the salt marshes, those big fields of Spartino. And then you also have the mangroves with their tangled roots and their higher canopy. They, they kind of have an air of secret and mystery. This area in particular is so special because you get both of those and you get pockets of each and, and you see those habitats overlap. On this wild stretch of Florida coast, salt marsh and mangrove provide tremendous benefits. They offer refuge to wildlife and multi-billion dollar fisheries. They filter and clean the estuary's water and they sequester carbon faster than tropical rainforests. Each year across the Southeast, salt marshes can absorb enough wave energy and flood water to prevent billions of dollars in storm damages. But on a changing coast, this mosaic of wetland habitats is as vulnerable as it is vital. We have about 1,000 people moving here every day to Florida. We're seeing a ton of development along the coast and that just limits the space that these habitats have. As we see sea level rise, those marshes need to migrate upslope a little bit and they're running right into that development. They're running into our roadways and our seawalls and our houses and infrastructure. Under current conditions, up to one third of salt marsh across the Southeast could be lost by 2060. But habitat managers are working to change those conditions by restoring the proper elevation for salt marsh and mangrove. So this parcel is six and a half acres and represents the technique. We're removing the spill, taking it off site and getting that elevation down to the highest level of intertidal marsh elevation. So that gives it a fighting chance to keep up with sea level rise, puts it in that tidal marsh range we plant Spartina alterniflora out here, and that Spartina alterniflora holds the elevation. We see recruitment of black mangroves, and that whole marsh plant community starts to fill in. That's a really good indication that we hit the right elevation. When we think about marsh migration, we're thinking about it in terms of elevation, so going up slope, making sure that it has space to migrate as sea levels rise. And then we're also thinking about it upstream. Along the intracoastal waterway, engineering a gentle grade at the proper elevation gives coastal wetlands a foothold to migrate upslope. But across the intracoastal waterway, the migration of salt marsh upstream requires a different solution. So this is a, a berm, sort of a high boundary that cuts off this interior wetland portion from the surrounding habitats. We'll take you down the intracoastal for a little ways and then we will go into this ditch along the outside of the impoundment. And when we're in the ditch, you'll be able to see on the right-hand side, this is natural undisturbed marsh. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that, that dike around the impoundment and then the habitat on the other side. When it was constructed in the 1950s, the dike cut off the flow of sediments to the impounded marsh, causing it to lose crucial elevation and preventing marsh vegetation from migrating upstream as sea levels rise. So you're seeing areas where the vegetation is thinning and will ultimately transition to open mudflat and eventually open water. Restoring connections to the uplands is critical for the health of the wetlands, and that work is already underway. In 2010, we breached this section of the impoundment dike to reestablish this tidal creek, and it meanders its way all the way up into the upland from here. In doing this project, if we can restore a lot of that flow across the marsh, that helps deposit those sediments. But these transition zones, I mean, these are really critical spaces. That's where your resilience happens. That's where you have room for the habitats to shift around and adjust and adapt as conditions change. We want to make room for that to happen, both upslope and upstream. 
At the inland edge of the state park property, the river valley stretches intact into the uplands. With the impoundment now breached, sediments can flow downstream to help sustain salt marsh elevation. And a more resilient salt marsh can migrate upstream as sea levels rise. This is a, a critical location because the upland area adjacent is relatively undisturbed and it's publicly owned and it's in conservation already. If we have intact wetlands adjacent to intact uplands with a secure path for migration, it gives us a better chance to have functional habitat into the future.